Hi guys, welcome to Gobi's Tri-Tips Episode 2. I didn't have a plan to make a second one, I just made the first one on the armored loadouts and I thought, oh, Tri-Tips, uh, very cute. But someone requested I do a tutorial on how to pierce gun Devil Joe. So here we are. So this is going to be a Devil Joe fight breakdown. And I think a lot of people don't use Bowgun. And I'm here to tell you it's really fun and it's really easy, all right? If you wanted to ever Bowgun, Devil Joe is so good for Bowgunning. Now, I will warn you, I have zero editing skills. And what I have here is a quick video that I, I took. I literally just went on the city and I, I shot up Devil Joe a bunch and I got the footage I wanted. Uh, so now I have a video that I can commentate over and I'm going to draw on. Let me test. Okay. Yeah, cool. I think that worked, right? Okay, let's go. Uh, first thing to talk about, of course, is your gun loadouts. Um, there's three guns you can use. The first one here is available to you at high rank 40, right here. Rex Barrel Rex. Um, it's not something I would recommend you use at high rank 50, but the point is, if this is like endgame power. This is endgame viable. I'd use this to hunt my first 10 double Devil Joes in my Gobi guide, and I don't think I was any worse off for it. In fact, I was probably one of the better DPS players on the team. So, yeah. Like, if people want to do, like, um, whatchamacallit, it? Jaggy and Menace, and yeah, you could run this set, and you would be comparable to endgame. So, this gun loads 8-6. Um, uh, I don't have Pierce S all up. It would load 8-8. Eight, eight. That's a fantastic clip. Eight, eight shots in the mag. Like, really, really excellent. Um, it has a shorter range than Devil's Grin, so you're going to have to be closer than normal. Devil's Grin, I will say, with a .8 ran range, is the kind of sweet spot. Okay, so here it is. Um, this is this is my gun. This is my pet gun. I think most people don't use this gun. I, I just suggested it for something. So it's Rex Grin Rex. Most people don't use this gun. It loads 5.8. We, we ignore Pierce 3. Pierce 3 is like kind of a bad shot. So just take my word for it. <laughs> um, okay, okay, let me explain. Um, Pierce 1 hits 3 times. Pierce 2 hits 4 times. Pierce 3 hits 5 times. The monster has to be long enough because the bullet's going to continue traveling. Um, the fifth hit is just not going to register on Pierce 3 unless the monster is very large, a.k.a. it's going to be Ciadius or World Eater Devil Joe. Against those guys, yes, you can fire Pierce 3. But, so it's damage loss against smaller monsters, and you even get more Pierce 1 and Pierce 2 ammo. I don't just mean more shots in the bag. You get 60 and 50 and 40. It's, it's 60, 50, 40 for Pierce 1, 2, 3. But you even get to bring more combined materials. It combines into more shots. Pierce 1, you get like 360 rounds total. Pierce 2, I, you get, uh, let me think here, 90 plus 50. You get 140. Okay, and Pierce 3, I, I don't remember, but it, it sucks. Okay, so so this is, yeah, this is my pet gun, Rex, Rex Grin Rex. I don't think performance differs that much from the popular gun, which I'll also show you. There's nothing wrong with any of these guns. You can use whatever you like. Um, it will probably be dictated by fashion and slots, okay? That's what you should decide on. Okay, right here. So this gun is 360 with minus 10% affinity. Um, my pet gun, Rex Grin Rex, is 348 with 0% affinity. I haven't run the numbers. It's probably very close. The main thing is that my gun has three slots and this gun has two slots. That's, I think, this should be the deciding factor, that and, and style. So this loads 785, mine loads 585, okay? So it, it doesn't really matter. Use what you like. It's totally cool. And let me just, okay, yeah, I'm just showing off some armor skills here. Um, what does it say? Okay, you don't, quote unquote, this is air quotes, need evasion one versus devil Joe. All of his attacks are evadable without evasion one, but it's so good. It makes the fight so easy that I recommend everyone take it take evasion one i'm probably on my 500th devil joe and i still like evasion one i have like a stretch goal to learn to fight him without evasion one so i can like i don't know go with like critical eye one or two or something but like this is the smallest optimization it's so marginal it makes my hunt so much more clenchy like it, it's so much harder so i recommend everyone you bring um you bring evasion one otherwise my armor obviously you're firing pierce shots so all you care about is, all you care about is pierce damage so that is just full Diablos on top. And then the bottom two pieces, I just use Baryoth. Um, I get evasion with no talisman, okay? So 
all the skills you need to hunt berry, uh, not berry, all the skills you need to hunt Devil Drill are in the armor. The talisman is bonus. You get Trap Master, you could get Critical Eye, you could get Bombardier. I don't know. It's totally up to you. Okay. This is like most of my sets, they're talisman independent. I don't demand specific talismans of the player. I think any set, most sets that require it are bad unless they're very, very specialized. Like you just can't get around it, which is with, um, Great Swords can't get around it and Adrenaline often can't get around it. So those things you need talisman support. Okay. Okay, so I said pure shots. Pierce. I know. That's a very, very uh, insightful comment. But um, Devil Joe, you want to, f for most pure shots, uh, you want to fire down the length of the body. Okay. That means, so I, for, if I fire here, I get from the head, I get hits on the head, the neck, and the belly. Furthermore, this giant white flash here, this white flash that you're seeing, this means I'm doing extra damage. Pierce is sensitive to range. I will have hits later where I don't get the white flash. I'm very happy for that because I can show you. I think this is 50% extra damage. If I'm wrong, leave a comment below and tell me, hey, idiot, you're wrong. It's actually so-and-so damage and cite me a source. I was too lazy to look it up, sorry. But yeah, so this is this is the money range. See this big white flash? That is what you want. Damage per bullet, in my opinion, is very important and it's not that hard to achieve. Okay, let's clear this. Roar is easily dodged with Evasion 1, can be dodged with Evasion 0. Okay. This, I think, is Devil Joe's most surprising attack if you've never fought him before. I call this attack World Sweeper, okay? His head is a gigantic hurt box, and he will swing it back and forth like a pendulum. Like, you know, you play those video games where there's a big axe blade hanging from the ceiling and it, it swings back and forth right so that's what he does furthermore his tail here it's, it's kind of like curled right now but it's like about here is also a hurt zone and the tail is going to swing here to here okay so the head is going back and forth like this and the tail is going on the outside on the opposite timing as the head okay um I see new players try like get hit by this a lot. And if you notice, there's one place that is wide open that's not covered in red. And that is right through the center, okay? The easiest way to dodge this is right through the center. The only moment you have to worry about is when his head swings directly across your path. This is the only intersection. If you go between his legs, he cannot hit you with the tail. What's more, you can roll right through. If you think the head is coming to hit you on this intersection here, you can just roll right through. It is so easy. Even without evasion one, it is so easy. And this is not just um, avoidance. It also sets you up for the next damage part. Okay, let's let's see what I do here. I I literally walked, right? I didn't, I just walked, okay? Now what happens? I turn around and look at this. I get the white flashes. Sorry for the tearing because I'm pausing and stuff. I get the white flashes. I punish World Sweeper, right? I walk between his legs and I get to punish World Sweeper. I get to fire. I had to reload there, so... And, okay, the reload probably... I, I couldn't, like, get through that, but look, right? Instead of, like, if I had not been outside, I would be, like, I don't know, here? Oops. I would be, like, here or here, right? It's harder to get through. And this way, I got my shot to connect, but this way, you are not connecting all your hits. Um, I know this from firsthand experience. You can watch other people's bullets and you see the flashes. They just don't connect. This also happened to me back in the day where I was firing from this angle. And Devil Joe's pitfall, so he's pinned to the floor. And I had a teammate here. And he reported that, hey, stop shooting me with your bullets. Because the hits are going through Devil Joe and, and flinching him, right? So because we go through, we go right underneath World Sweeper, we get this, right? Perfect shooting, right? All four hits. Or three hits if you're using Pierce 1. Which is totally fine. Pierce 1 is very good. Don't don't be don't be fooled by like, oh, it's Pierce level 1. No, Pierce 1 is good. It's better than Pierce 3. I got roared there because I'm bad. <laughs> I was probably trying to roll. I don't know what I was doing. Oh, again, yeah. I went right under World Super and look at all this. I get to hit uh, the good zone. I get to get all the hits. Um, I rolled there to get closer. You don't really have to roll. Unless you're in range, of course. There will be in range moments. Okay, here. Okay. That is rollable with 
Evasion Zero, but Evasion One makes it a lot easier. It's a little bit like a tail whip, but I feel like I have a mental block. But again, if you have Evasion One, just wait till the last moment, and it's you don't even have to be that accurate and roll. Like it's really easy. Just trust me. Have have some faith. <laughs> you can do it. Okay, rock throws easy. You just get out of the way and continue firing. This is this is nothing. This is just free openings. Okay, I've demonstrated almost everything I want to demonstrate. So. I just turned my back to him here and oh no, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, he eats. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, um, his belly is the best hit zone when raged, his face is the best hit zone when not raged. You want him raged all the time, he takes so much more damage. Oh, uh... Yeah, okay, so I did not get the big white flash. So this was too close, right? This is costing me damage. And then, so it turns into like, it turned into the big white flash later. So I was just a little too close on, yeah, right there again. So I was a little too close on some of these hits. And, oh, there, there, yeah. So if you didn't see it, just go back and just review it some more. Again, there. Now I rolled through the middle of World Super and look, three hits with the direct line down the center line, right? That's what we want. And again, he turns right into that shot. So you just nail him again, free. This attack is nothing. Uh, the lunge bite is not threatening, even with evasion zero. Like the active frames on his um, on his mouth for the hurt box, it, it's not that big a deal. I believe I, uh, his tail is also a hurt box on some of these movements, on a lot of these movements. So if you're like, you know, like dodging things in multiplayer is often a lot harder than single player because like if the monster faces up another hunter and does some movements and you're just not in like your regular place like i'm always looking at devil joe right so i know what to do it's funny like in multiplayer sometimes it's just like wait what am i supposed to do here this is a hurt box what the heck the timing's all off i can't tell where it is so it's a little funny so single player can be easier in multiplayer easier than multiplayer in that sense but of course you're lacking the dps of like skilled teammates all right that was just a ramble i probably didn't yeah tail whip it's just like every other tail whip, easily rollable with evasion zero, obviously easier rollable with evasion one. I was caught in a reload here. Also, I don't have any ammo left. <laughs> this is uh, the cost of playing with no HUD. I don't know if you guys have um, noticed or care about the fact that I play with no HUD. I think it makes it more cinematic and I think it looks cool, but I don't know if you guys like actually want to read like my loadout. Like, oh, you know, what's my health? How much ammo do I have? How many bombs do I have, you know? Again, yeah, I'm perfect position. Stagger the belly there. Or that was probably stagger something else. I don't know what that was stagger. Bad shot, bad aim. Okay, here we go. Yeah, roll that. I think that timing I would have gotten through with evasion zero. Again, little sweeper right through the middle. And pump him full of lead. Oh, that was a, that was a belly stagger. Look at this. Look, it's so easy. Okay. So inside his body is really the safest place to be. The only attack that gets you in there is like uh, what I call leg. I think he'll do a leg here. If he doesn't, it's just where he raises one leg and stomps the floor. So that's the only attack where he like will hit you inside the body and it's just easily rolled again. So, okay. Okay. Okay, he went to eat. Okay. Let me talk about the eating mechanics. This is all on my website too. If you guys just want to read instead of watching audio visual, you can click through and just read it in text. Um, Devil Joe, in his com when he's in combat, but by well, I mean when he's in his combat move set, he does not have a turn turn. When I say turn turn, I mean like you know, like say you're behind Rathalos. What does he do? He does he does jump back fireball, or he might do ninety degree turn, ninety degree turn. Right? Devil Joe does not have turn turn in his combat move set. If he does do turn turn, he's either zoning or eating. If he's eating, let him eat. You saw that I waited for him to eat before I shot him again. So when he's falling down here, you can get free damage in. But if you stagger him before he eats, he will never eat that piece of meat again. And if you put down another piece of meat, there's no guarantee he'll go for it. You should put down another piece, but like I said, there's no guarantee. So wait for him to eat. When he does turn, turn, just, just stop. Stop whatever you're doing and see what he does. If he goes to eat, wait for him to begin to fall down because like he's falling asleep here and then attack him. Get a few extra hits in. He will not wake until... Okay, if you hit him, if you hit him now... Now he wakes up. Don't be that guy, okay? 
your team is setting up here. So this is how you maximize against the Sleeping Devil Joe. Everyone places their bombs. You should bring large barrel bomb plus, of course, if you have it. Um, I'm placing, just get up to his chin, right? And place it right here. Like it's not, doesn't have to be that precise. I mean, you'll see why. Also, don't be in a hurry to wake it up. Your teammates have to sharpen, have to heal. They have to get in position for when the monster wakes, okay? They sleep for a while. You're going to be safe. The only time you should hurry is if they're like small monsters and you're afraid the small monster is going to wake them. It's like, okay, then you wake them up. And final thing, I'll get the screen tearing out of the way. Um, I see people make this mistake. It drives me crazy. Um, when you wake a sleeping monster with a bomb, it does triple damage, okay? Large barrel bombs do insane damage. And to triple it is also insane. Um... The first hit to wake the monster does, if it's a attack, it does double. If it's a bomb, it does triple. I see people like place a small barrel bomb here or whatever. And the small barrel bomb, what that does is it hits Devil Joe and wakes him and sucks up the triple damage. And then your bombs go off and only do single damage, okay? So when you're detonating bombs, use a small barrel bomb that is away from the bombs. That way, when the bomb explodes, then it blows up this guy which then gets tripled on Devil Joe, okay? Um, another thing you can do is you can... These guys actually have a huge, um, like, hit detection, I guess is what it's called. So if you fire a shot that's, like, way off over here, like, like I fire a shot that's a... And, and the, the... Oops, let me, let, me, let me do it like this. And the intersection point is, like, right here, or maybe even out here, it will connect and this will detonate. So you could also just fire a shot, like, way off... And it'll detonate the bombs. But I like small barrel bomb because there's a fuse and your teammates can see, oh, we're starting again. But that's been your lesson in sleep bombing. And the Devil Joe, you put the pitfall at the chin because... Okay. He is not in the trap. He's not in the trap because he's not raged. I don't want him in the trap unless he rages, okay? Because when he rages, you get the juicy um, angry hit zone right here enormous damage if you don't let him rage you're not getting this damage um some people like to put it like put the trap like say his legs are here they put the trap like over here and then like the bombs go off and he wakes up and plop right into the trap before he gets the rage that is wrong all right that's not what you want and i think i've demonstrated basically everything i wanted in this hunt i'd probably go a little bit longer but like i said i'm not completing this hunt it's it's academic at this point. I, I really, it's just a tutorial for you guys. And this is everything I wanted to show. And, and like I said, I want adrenaline for the fight if I'm going to solo this. That was a bad shot. Okay, I didn't get staggered that time. That's leg. This this attack I call leg. Yeah, it's it's free. And rock throw, free. Just, just keep pumping him full of lead. Or whatever, whatever pure shots are made of. <laughs> Plastic. They look kind of plasticky, don't you think? And what happens here? Oh, hip check. Oh, nice. I tried to fire with an empty gun. I play HUDless. That's my excuse. Guys, don't don't try to fire an empty gun. The game will punish you. But again, like, HUDless. Oh, look. Oh, it's like I, I went to confirm. It's like, oh, I'm, just, I'm stupid. But yeah. Well, there you go. That is how you pierce gun Devil Joe. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more fight breakdowns. I'll make some more Gobi tri-tips. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.